Hi everyone, it's Helen from Witchcrafts. Today, by popular demand, I'm going to show you um, the processes that I went through in order to make a junk journal like this one. So if you haven't seen my previous video, which was where I did a quick flip through of this junk journal that I made and I promise that I'm going to be working in, um, I'll link it in the iCard up in the corner and also in the description box down below. Um, but I had quite a few comments, thank you very much to everybody who liked and commented on my previous video, um, saying that they really wanted to see the process that I went through in order to make this junk journal so I thought why not I'll I love making them I'm going to make another one it's not going to be identical but it's going to be very similar so you'll be able to follow along with the steps it's very quick and easy and uh, simple to use you don't need any specialist equipment really um, and then what we'll do is we'll end up with something a bit like this junk journal here so the first thing that we're going to need is some cardboard to make the cover of the journal um, now some of them said they couldn't believe that the previous journal was made from a cereal box but it was um, just a simple ordinary empty cereal box like this one you could also use um, any other kind of cardboard packaging um, so an ice cream package or you can use um, this is an envelope from a well-known mail order brand so all you need to do is just cut it down the sides to make a journal you can make one any size you like. My one that I made previously was about A5, which is A4 folded in half, and that's quite convenient if the paper that you've got is standard um, A4 size. But as I say, you can make it any size you like. So we're going to make a slightly smaller one. So I'm going to be using this box here. So we're going to be cutting off the flaps at the top and the sides, and you need to find where the card is joined together in order to make the box and you need to either just peel that apart being careful not to rip the paper, the card too much and then open it up and then you've got your blank to work from and then all you need to do is just cut off the flaps around the outside you can either use scissors or a paper trimmer Sometimes I use my guillotine, but it's a bit wonky sometimes, so um, I'm just gonna use scissors. So these are the ones that I use for cutting things like this, and I've got a dodgy wrist. So these are brilliant because they are much easier to use if you've got any kind of issues with your hands or wrists. you've got your card cut to the correct shape we then need to decide what we're going to cover it with now I'm going to be using fabric for this one because that's what I used for the previous one so if you've got some fabric lying around then um, it's a perfect opportunity to use up any scraps you can always sew together pieces if you don't have one piece big enough one tip that I heard uh, from somebody else was um, some stores such as Hobbycraft here in the UK and other shops um, in other countries sell what they call fat quarters which are squares of fabric that come in a, a bundle um, I think they're used for quilting officially um, but what you could do if you wanted to was sew a bunch of those together to make a piece of fabric that would be the right size for your for your cover so I've put together a selection of options. I bought a bundle of fabric scraps from eBay years and years ago and I'm still working my way through it. Um, and some of the things that are in this pile here were in, that, um, were in that bundle. The other thing you could do is perhaps go to a fabric shop locally, see if, you've got, if they've got any off cuts, ends of rolls, anything like that that you could use. Or this is um, an old pillowcase that had become a bit too scruffy to use, so I use that for various things. I've got this fabric here, which is really nice. It's quite a heavyweight sort of upholstery fabric. Um, I don't think I'm going to use that because the pattern's a bit too busy. This is a piece of that pillowcase where I stained it using um, a solution of coffee in a tray and then um, put some coloured inks on a piece of paper and then turned that upside down and some of the ink colours spread out onto there. So while it was wet, those colours um, 
moved onto the the fabric instead so instead of it being just a stark white pillowcase you've got this rather nice toned version this is another one of the the sort of end of roll scraps that were in the bundle that i bought so this is quite a nice patterned cotton it's quite a light color so i quite like that but it's quite sturdy so that's an option this is the fabric that i use to cut out some of these squares or rectangles um, to put onto the cover to make some embellishments to make it look a bit more interesting so that's a possibility then there's another piece of sort of fairly heavyweight cotton twill material here um, which again that's really nice and hard wearing it's got some nice birds on it it's quite plain but it's got these colors so that's an option and then finally this is a piece of um, just plain cotton which um, I think might be something like calico. It's thicker than the pillowcase was, but again, I've dyed this or stained it using coffee uh, or tea you could also use, where you make up a solution and then just immerse whatever you want to dye into the solution um, and then it, it comes out looking like this. Now this one could probably do with a bit of an iron, but I quite like the sort of the crumpled, wrinkled look of it. But what we need to do is make sure that our chosen piece of fabric is going to be big enough for the cover that we want to make. So here's our cover and you can see that if it wasn't quite so crumpled, this would in actual fact be big enough. Now you want it to be able to overlap because we're going to be folding the edges over like this. And then obviously when you fold this, you need more width at the edges here to take into account the bend of the spine that you're going to make so this is um, definitely a possibility and I'm actually not going to iron it because I really like the wrinkly look of of this so I think we're going to go with this the next thing you need to decide on is if you're going to have any embellishments on the front cover that need to be sewn on before you attach your base fabric onto your cardboard cover. So here, for example, this is layered. So we've got some paper here and some scraps of fabric. This is a piece of lace trim and on the spine as well. So most of these I actually attached to the base fabric before I then folded it over and stitched it, glued it, and then stitched it onto the side of the, uh, on, um, before I actually stitched it onto the cover. The cardboard cover underneath for security so that's what we need to do next is find what we're going to decorate it with okay so i've collected together a bunch of things that could be used as embellishments to go onto the front cover um for me junk journaling is about using what you've already got to make something beautiful out of things that might normally be thrown away so i've got here a huge variety of different things so i've got some fabric off cuts some of them are um, just sort of the edges of the fabric where you can see they were testing out the the color printing this is a scrap of um i think it was from a sofa um selection book where you can choose the fabric you want to use for your sofa a little bit of cheesecloth here just a little old scratty bit uh, this is the paper that i put the ink onto that i then used this fabric which was just the ordinary white pillowcase um, and then i've also got some coffee dyed tissue paper here as well so a huge variety of different things got some little scraps some threads some corrugated cardboard a um, bit of ribbon another bit of off cut of fabric um, and then these are some fabric clusters that I made quite a long time ago and just been sitting on so these are just various different shapes and squares of fabric scraps which I've just held together with a button which I've just sewn through so these are the sort of things that you could make um, in the evening while you're watching tv or what have you so these are quite good fun I quite like this one I think we might go with a bluey theme for this one so I'm going to keep that one out and then let's have a look through and see what else we want to use now I think I might use this piece of ribbon as the tie closure for my journal this is something I rejected from the previous journal so I think I might make use of that seeing as we've already got it it's just some little bits of thread the paper's quite nice I'm not sure about the tartan but there's some more little fabric scraps there a bit of card uh, corrugated cardboard 
Um, I think we'll have a piece of tissue paper, some more of that. I want to use these numbers and this tartany fabric. So that'll do us to start with, I think. So what we're going to do is just imagine this is now attached to the cover and we're going to just lay some things out and see and see what we think of everything so you have to remember you're working backwards so this is the front on the right hand side and this is the back so just if you've got something you want to appear on the front you just need to make sure that you put it there so I think what we'll do first of all we'll just start putting some things down and just see what it looks like and then the beauty of this is that we can rearrange them as much as we like as often as we like until we're happy with the placement of everything now I like things to overlap and I like things to be in odd numbers so um, we're going to go with threes where we can I think um, you might notice here that this edge is um, jagged so this has been cut using some pinking shears which are a special kind of scissors that you can buy with a serrated edge like these so these are these have been used for years for cutting fabric I think it's supposed to prevent the fabric edge from fraying but I'm not a seamstress so I don't know perhaps someone can tell me if that's the case um, so I'm just going to lay these things out and we'll see what we like the look of so obviously some of these are needing to be trimmed to size now you can either trim it you can rip it um, cut it whatever so I'm going to see if I can rip this piece it depends on the grain of the fabric sometimes you can sometimes you can't can't in this case it's the wrong way so we'll just snip that little piece off and then we'll do I think we'll use the pinking shears here I'm just going to cut out the the numbers here so we've just got the numbers showing oops that's attached Okay, now one thing you can do to add a bit more interest to some of these pieces if they look a little bit dark is to use either some ink, um, so I've got here, this is Tim Holtz Vintage Photo and you can use this to sort of add a bit of colour. This is a cotton reel that I've stuck a replacement foam pad onto the bottom of so I've got a different colour and then you can just use this on the edges to sort of add a little bit more interest to what you're putting onto your journal. You could use a felt tip pen or you could use some paint. If you get the paint and just put it on your finger, then that would allow you to um, create a similar sort of effect. So, there we go. I quite like that. So now we need to decide how we're going to attach these. Now some of them I want to sew through, some of them I want to glue on. Um, this one's already got some sewing on it so perhaps this one could be glued into place. And then these I think I will glue. And then we'll see where we are with that. Now in terms of glue, when it comes to attaching fabric to paper or paper to fabric, the best glue to use is um, Fabrifix, which I believe is a acetate based glue. You can also use PVA glue, which is um, a wood glue, school glue, um, it's just a plain white glue. The only problem with PVA is because it's got water in it, it can cause paper to wrinkle. So if you want something to look very smooth, I'd steer clear of PVA because it can cause this wrinkliness. The other option is something like this, which is a fabric glue, um, specifically for, um, I think it's meant for doing hems and things on trousers. It's not that permanent, but you, if you're going to back it up with something else, like sewing it as well, then this would probably be okay. And then this is what I use most of the time. This is the acetate, um, or acet acetate based glue. This is called three in one, but it also comes um, in some places called Colal. So this is my giant bottle of Colal, this is a litre um, and then I just decant it from here into a smaller bottle so it's a bit less messy to use. So let's have a go at sticking some of these things down and see how we get on. You don't need very much of this glue because it does spread. It dries super fast so you don't have much option for repositioning 
if you realize that you don't like where you've put something but it does dry clear which is really handy you obviously can reposition it a little bit before the glue has a chance to dry but don't rely on being able to pull things up and stick them back down again if you're not happy with where you've put something it also gets everywhere but it peels off really easily so I'm just gonna put a little bit on here just to hold that bit where I want it because I'm going to sew around this piece move on to what we've got going across the spine here because this is so wrinkly I'm just going to stretch the fabric underneath the piece I'm sticking down so that it sort of stays a bit better so there we go so that's what we've got so far the various bits put in place now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to sew around some of these just onto the fabric. We're not including the cardboard backing at all at the moment. Um, just going to sew some of these pieces down in place. Now I just have a very basic sewing machine. I believe I got it free um, a few years ago when I subscribed to a crafting magazine. And I only use it for this. I don't do sewing as, um, as, a, as a hobby. I don't make dresses or shirts or anything or clothes or anything like that. I only use it for doing this. If you have a super snazzy fancy sewing machine, I would strongly recommend that you um, look after it. So don't try and go through anything too thick. You might want to change to a different needle. I believe the needle that I'm using in my sewing machine is a denim needle. So it's designed for sewing through thick fabrics, which is really handy when it comes to sewing through multiple layers of cardboard or fabric. And also when we come on to actually attaching the fabric onto the cardboard part of the of the cover. Now I'm not going to film doing it because the vibration of the sewing machine will make the camera go all over the place. So um, I'll be back in just a moment once I've done the sewing. Okay, I'm back. I've now sewn all of these embellishments onto the fabric cover of the journal. Um, I thought this looked a little bit blank so I just got a piece of um, hessian sackcloth type stuff and a little off cut of fabric there and I just zigzag stitched these two pieces together first and then just did a normal straight stitch down just to sew this onto here. So I've been around everything, um, I've used some zigzag stitch, I've used some straight stitch, I've used a combination on a lot of the pieces, there's like flappy edges. One thing you do need to be careful of when you're stitching through paper is what I would sort of term the perforation effect that if you're stitching paper and you're using a straight stitch a running stitch like this then there is a possibility that the paper will rip away from itself but this is all now sewn on I'm going to leave all of these ends for now because sometimes they can look quite nice but other times they can kind of get in the way a little bit so the next stage we need to do is we now need to try this against the cardboard cover to see whether or not that is going to fit um, and if we can wrap it round. Um, so, but this video has gone on long enough so please let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this video and if you want to see the next one um, and it will be coming out very soon. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!